Hello, this is Scott Buccino, editor of Telecoms.com here at Network X 2022. And I'm delighted to be speaking to Stefano Cantarelli from Mavenir. So Stefano, why don't you just start by telling us what you've been talking to people about at the show? Thank you very much, first. And second, this is a, a fantastic show here in Amsterdam. It has been missing for some time. We are here to continue our important message of transformation of 5G. Uh, the mobile uh, network infrastructure are undergoing a significant transformation. And what is important is to let people understand that 5G is not an extension of the existing mobile network like 4G. It's not just adding frequencies and adding a bit of capacity. It's about a new architecture, which is a real broadband mobile network. And to do so, by definition itself, by standardization itself, a 5G network must be a cloud native type of infrastructure. And uh, we have seen a lot of network happening in 5G, even if the development has been slower than some people expected, especially here in Europe. Uh, but also we have seen mainly NSA network, non-standalone network, which is really on the backup of uh, EPC, which is a 4G network. What we really think is that a proper 5G network needs to be a standalone, an NSA network, for the agility, the ability to actually drive a core infrastructure to be cloud-native, service-based architecture, all those nice words that we have been hearing. Now, we understand that a lot of uh, uh, people were playing in this space, they have legacy and so on. So that's why we are talking to them about our converged packet core, which is actually a service-based architecture, cloud native. We can manage uh, 5G SA, 5G NSA, and 4G, even down to 3G and, and, and 2G when it's needed in order to support that, but we need uh, an architecture which is actually agile. So that's really the direction where we are going. We have been recently announcing about uh, DTAG in Germany, Deutsche Telekom in Germany, who has uh, selected the Mavenir for uh, 5G SA, NSA, and 4G. And uh, we're extremely proud of our product uh, and our solution in that space because it combines all those capabilities. I just want to make a very small example that some people maybe don't have it uh, so clear that, for example, when you actually have interfaces with your enterprise um, uh, customers, uh, most of the times today, the network operator have to put uh, uh, intermediate software in between the core networks and the enterprise uh, application because the API on the core networks are typically very private, very specific for telco. While instead with service-based architecture, you actually expose uh, APIs which are directly exposable to an enterprise. So you eliminate a layer in between and you make things more agile, easy to understand, much quickly uh, uh, you know, than it was normally. So that's the type of things that you can actually do in a cloud-native environment uh, with such type of solution. And um, yeah, one thing, as, as a journalist sort of covering 5G, you know, part of our job is to sort of sift through hype and, and marketing speak and that sort of thing. But, and we've, we've generally pushed back a little bit on 5G hype, not because, because we think there's anything wrong with 5G, just but it hasn't necessarily immediately delivered stuff to justify the hype. But I think what, what you were just describing earlier, when with the move to full standalone and, and the sort of virtualized cloud native stuff, is where it starts to deliver. Perhaps you could just tell us a little bit more about how, what, what the actual sort of ROI will be, what, what sort of new services or new capabilities will be delivered as a result of it. Yeah, we have already looked uh, into this for, for some years now, and there are things that can be done immediately. You know, there's a lot of uh, use cases about uh, uh, distributing infrastructure in order to uh, diminish the cost of uh, um, backhauling of traffic uh, by having UPF uh, separated and UPF distributed, which is the user plane of the packet core distributed. It's a practice that actually has already started in the old days, like for source switches, was like between monolithic switches and media gateways that were distributed around. Um, there are then all these cases about enterprise uh, uh, application interfacing there. And, and the other thing is the go-to-market. I mean, the go-to-market uh, uh, today with the 5G standalone is much faster. A lot of the people in the field are telling us we would love to introduce a 5G SA, but uh, for us it's a problem to integrate with our uh, uh, business systems, your, your charging right. and so on. So we're trying, trying to take a view where you actually need to be a more agile to get there. You need to have applications which are much easier. And, 
And where, if you go back to your ROI comment, this whole thing is not just because of the 5G itself, it's about the virtualization. Virtualization is really key in all of this. And virtualization is meant to really touch two important points. One is about, uh, well, let's call it cost savings, you know, a, a cost structure which is definitely lower. But this cost savings doesn't happen just by changing some embedded hardware with some more standardized hardware, but it happens by following a path of Automa automating uh, operations by making everything absolutely orchestrated and being able to scale in and scale out. A lot of people today says they have core infrastructure with the virtualized, but actually they just have a software on a, on, a, on a server farm, but they don't really manage their application. They don't scale in, scale out. They don't orchestrate. They don't automate it to the level they should. And it's like uh, having something that uh, saves a lot, but actually you don't use it. You know, it's like having an hybrid car, but you cut off the electric part and use only petrol. That's not the point. You say, yeah, I have an hybrid car, but I don't use hybrid. I don't use yeah. the electricity, right? So that's really where we're going. We think uh, virtualization is the key point, uh, is the, the, the real revolution in the telecom. We strongly believe that. And we strongly believe that this has to be end-to-end. It cannot stop just in the core, on the application, it has to go down to the transport, and transport was all one of the first that's been highly virtualized, and down to the radio uh, access network, which is really the, if you want, the last big... Yeah, uh, well, it's, I'm pleased you mentioned the, the RAN, because a lot, of the, a lot of my awareness of Mavenir has been in the area of open RAN, where you're, you're very active. Uh, and obviously, which is, uh, if I, I may interrupt, yeah, go on. which is quite ironical because we actually started in the core space yeah. with Volti, IMS, uh, and then Packet, and only afterwards we look at the run. But right. there's well, a lot of hype at the moment. Well, right? but uh, probably at least in part for the reason you just said, where it's got to be an end-to-end -end thing. So it makes sense that you would have an end-to-end -end area of interest yourself. So maybe you could just uh, bring us up to speed regarding uh, Mavenir's activities and, and perspectives on the open run scene at the moment. Yeah. I think uh, it's a good point. Uh, open run is a very critical moment uh, in the run space because we can see very strong forces from legacy who are pushing back, uh, but their arguments are changing continuously. And we are seeing that now they're talking about virtualize their solutions. So it seems like uh, it is clear that open run, and when I say open run, I mean the whole virtualized uh, infrastructure and the whole virtualized run with CU, DU, RRU, and so on. Uh, is the architecture of the future for RAN, okay? Yeah. And I have no doubt about it. I've been in this industry for a long time, and I know that that is the right uh, architecture. Okay. Uh, there are, of course, some dynamic of the market, and at the moment, we are in a very critical moment for that, uh, where we are pushing hard. We are having success in the US, in India, and so on, where we are trying to push hard, starting first with Greenfield Operator, which, by chance, you know, Greenfield Operator don't have anything, and they choose what? Open RAN, which means is the best solution possible if you don't have anything, right? Makes sense. For Green, from Brownfield, well, it's a bit more complicated, of yeah. course, because you have a legacy to manage, but it does require some planning as it happened in the past. And remember in the past, there've been so many swapping. When Huawei came into Europe, you remember a lot of people swapped their infrastructure and then back into no, Nokia and Ericsson back, yeah. and so on. Yeah, exactly. So it is possible. It's not that it's not possible. Yeah. It just requires planning, thinking, focus, and a lot of mind set changing. Yes. You need to change the mindset of your people as when we move from circuit to packet, you know, you need to think in a different way. Nothing is more difficult. Something is just different. You have to look at it from a different point of view. But I have no doubt Open Run is growing. It's in a critical moment, as I said, because we are in a way where people are acknowledging and still trying to, uh, you know, find a way to get back into it. We in Maverney, we are working actively with everybody to try to find the best way to introduce this. In some cases, we've been extremely successful. In other, we're still working on it. And we hope that this, uh, as I said in many, many times, I do believe that somewhere around 2025, a lot of the new RAN infrastructure will be whole uh, open RAN compliant, which means really virtualized and open. Because remember, open means competition, Competition yeah. means innovation. There is no innovation without competition. And believe me, I have been on both sides of the fences and I have seen it. When there is no competition, people tend to, tend to sit down, yeah. relax, and be less creative. Let's put it that way. Completely agree.
Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.